views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. There they go! PS340 is an ass again. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Open the Show that opens up the Bronx and the world to you. I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you today. In fact, coming up on today's show, we take a look at a personal growth seminar and uh, how you can participate. Plus, the holidays are here, and we'll get some tips on how to stay within your budget as you shop uh, for your loved ones. After that, the winter can be a, a lonely place for some people, and we'll learn about ways to cope with loneliness and depression this holiday season. And then we'll find out about a bike course promoting fitness and a clean, healthy environment. Then my man Bobby C, he has the latest headlines. Wow, in the world of sports. Did you see, did you watch Sunday, Sunday football? Did you watch all the games? Well, he has all that information for you. Later on, we'll check out some healthy eating advice for seasonal parties and more. So stay tuned. All this and more is headed your way because we are now open. There you go, 340. Let me hear you, let me see you. You can clap at home too. Hello everybody, I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee, and you're watching Open, the live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. Now you can stay connected to us through uh, social media at BronxNet TV. Leading things off, our first guest is a Bronx native and founder of uh, Teach NYC. Yes, hi. <laughs> Teach NYC, Urban Teach NYC and joins us for a look at her upcoming workshops. We welcome Raza Ortega to the show. Hi, good morning. Oh, can, I, can I roll my tongue? Yes. <laughs> That's You did it fine. <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much nice for having me. You, yeah. Same here. So tell us about your, your programs. And yes. Your um, so Urban, yes, so Urban Teach NYC, um, we feature seminars and workshops and now online classes um, for working adults that are interested in learning, uh, life learning, uh, education. That's excellent because a lot yes. of people want to go back to school but they don't have the time exactly. to physically be in class That's like right. PS340. Yes, like yes. Like student for PS340. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, yeah, so our seminars are gear specific um, towards investing uh, in real estate or stocks, uh, financial wellness. Uh, we do multiple of uh, different areas from uh, nutrition to uh, how to improve your life work balance, your time management. Yeah. Um, so things that, again, adults need, but don't, don't necessarily have the time or, or money. don't know where to go to get exactly. it. Exactly, yeah. yes, so we're yes. happy to have you here. Thank you so much, Thank I appreciate you. it. Yeah, so people can learn, they can learn how to just invest? Yeah, how, how to invest. Um, I do, I teach online classes myself on mm -hmm. how to invest in stocks or using various investment apps uh, that are free. What's a good app? Uh, Acorns is a great app. Acorns, I yes. heard about that. I may yes. have that on my phone. Yeah. So Acorns, you can invest very easy. It's uh -huh. like investing your change. So yeah. every time you make purchases on your debit card or a credit card, it takes the, the remaining uh, round offs mm -hmm. from your purchase and throws it into a fund for you. Oh, yeah. Um, and over time, you can grow, you know, 50, 80, 100 dollars a month mm -hmm. um, long term, and it's very easy. There's just one dollar fee per month. Um, yeah. So I do online classes on how to teach people how to set up their account. I have it, Acorn. Awesome, <laughs> good, good, good. So you're on a, you're on track. Yes. Awesome. All right. So how can students get involved? You said invest your change. Yes, invest in your change. Have a little bucket or exactly. A water bottle and come home for the yes, change. Yes, yes. So this is the modern uh, way of investing oh, instead of using the can. Yeah. yeah. Um, 18 and over is all you need to be to have an account with Acorns. Mm -hmm. um, pay a dollar a month. You guys have to wait a little they bit. They have to wait long. a little bit, yes. So well, mom can invest. Yes, mom totally. Yeah, mom and dad can set up an account now and have them, you know, throw some of that change in there, uh, yeah. digital or electronically through their account. Um, and other classes that I do uh, are also financial wellness, how to better budget your money, how to save. Uh -huh. um, with kids, it's especially important to teach them early on 
about savings and you know staying within your budget and things like that. Yeah, I mean, how yeah. important is that? I mean, they don't teach totally. financial literacy in, in school. Correct. Yes. Maybe at three forty you do. I don't know. You do? You guys do? Well, give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Good. Good. So good. I, I remember being being in elementary school and the, mm -hmm. the banking company came around or the bank came around and gave us these little piggy banks. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, like yes, a yes. Little thing like that. You, has a little slot in it, you put your money in. They still have that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and then you had to, you know, there's a little way to get the money out. Right, right. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. So, yes. but this is a modern way of doing it. The modern way of doing it, yes. And other workshops we offer are how to start your own business and starting your and writing your own business plan, which is also very important oh, for adults. Yeah. So I have one of those uh, webinars coming up in January on the 30th. People That's excellent. Can, and yeah. it's free, so people can sign up on our website, um, urbanteachnyc.com or go right into our Instagram page and follow us and you can see all of the upcoming classes for 2019. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people start a business. Yes. Businesses without a business plan. Exactly. How important is that business plan? You need it. You need it. You cannot start a business without having a plan, at least a basic plan on how you're going to market your business, yeah. how you're going to fund the business, how you're going to staff the business, um, what outlets you're going to use to promote your business. Yeah you know, through print or advertising or, you know, online social media. So, right. um, yeah, so all these classes are important I'm for adults. Out with you. Oh, right. thank you. <laughs> so, but, and even if you need to borrow money, that business plan, it's a good idea it's to take you, it. They want exactly. to see it, right? Yes. They want to see what, yes. where you're going. That's right. Give Banks you, won't give you any money until you show them a plan. Yeah, give me yeah. a blueprint to, I want to know what you're going to do with this money. You That's know, right. Is it, uh, should I lend you this money? Exactly. Yeah, it's just so, it's preparation. Yeah. Preparation. And again, adults don't have much of, of that resource to, to have, to go mm -hmm. to um, nowadays. So it's, it's a good opportunity for them to, to So do where do that. we go? When is it? Um, it's January 30th. I'm doing it online. Oh. It's a live webinar. So you mm -hmm. get to ask questions. You can take notes. You can send me. Um, you can actually interact with the other uh, attendees in the meeting. Um, it's all done online. So uh -huh. you can use your phone or your computer and or your tablet. Go? Um, go to Urban Teach NYC. Sign up through a link right into the class. Um, and you will receive an email with your password to get into the class. And again, it's free. OK. Mm -hmm. Will my name pop up if I jump on? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that, that'll be fine. <laughs> yes. Probably's on. Great. And I'm sure there's a lot of great information. So who are you looking to serve? I'm looking to serve urban communities, uh, working adults uh, in our communities that need it the most, mm -hmm. um, ages 18 and over, you know, yeah. no limits. Um, just again, people that need information, that want education on things they can use uh, to improve their lives, mm -hmm. pretty much. What's unique about your, your workshops? There's a lot um, of people trying to do something yes. here and there, but just bits and pieces of what you're doing. Yes, so with me, is more is targeted towards a specific topic. You know, I don't like to bring in 20 different uh, scenarios or subjects to talk about. It's very specific. So if you want to learn about investing, you're going to go there just for that. Yeah. I'm not selling a product. I'm not selling a, a five-day class and a $300 package of something. You know, it's more, it's very targeted. Um, and again, I'm going to communities like Harlem, Washington Heights, the Bronx, Queens, very targeted mm -hmm. towards urban areas. What's the website we go to for more? UrbanTeachNYC.com. Give her a big round of applause, everybody. Rosalyn Ortega, founder of Urban Teach NYC. Thank you. Thank you for coming by. Thank you so much for we having appreciate me. Appreciate you. All right, Great, awesome. a wealth of information. Uh, we have to take a quick break right here, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Open Next. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. 
You were the worst at hide and go seek. And it's 340 again. Give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee. And holiday season is upon us. And many people have trouble staying on budget while shopping for gifts. Because when you get out there, <laughs> it's, uh, it's wide open, like our show here and our program. Joining us with tips on uh, how we can do all of that, we have... Uh, Lisa de Confusano. Lisa de Confusano, yeah! <laughs> Financial educator and certified college consultant for the National Campaign for Financial Literacy. We welcome you to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, once again, my name is Lisa Ray Campusano, and I'm a financial literacy educator for the National Campaign for Financial Literacy. Uh -huh. Because of our campaign, we have helped thousands of families nationwide help, grow, save, and protect their money. Mm -hmm. And I just want to share a couple tips today in terms of how you can, you know, make sure that you're budgeting and not overspending for the holidays. Yeah. So the first tip I want to talk about would definitely be, most importantly, to pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. Yes. How much? 10%, um, 20%, Yes. 50%? Normally, you should be in between 10 to 20% of your net income, so it's your income after taxes. Um, and I want you to look at it this way, Bob. What do you easily spend 5 to $10 a day on? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You, this morning, right? Coffee, lunch, breakfast. Yeah. So what I would advise is instead of buying coffee, breakfast, I would usually advise you to do that stuff at home and take it with you to work. So you can easily save those 5 to $10 a day. Get the brown you know? paper bag going. Right. <laughs> Make that sandwich, put it in Absolutely. the bag and take it with you. So that's, that's very important. Before you go out there to buy any gifts, I would definitely advise you or ask yourself, am I saving? Did I save today or this month? Right? Um, the second tip I want to talk about is the importance of budgeting. So when you go shopping, you want to make sure that you go out there with a plan, right? So budgeting... Don't go hungry. Don't <laughs> no, go hungry. <laughs> whether it be for toys or clothes or Right, food. right. So budgeting, well, Christmas shopping falls under the entertainment budget, and that's normally about 10% of your net income. That's big for me. Right. I so I, I, I definitely agree. Is, I should although say I get a lot of free to... stuff, I, get, I spend a lot on entertainment. <laughs> So that should be, that should, you know, you definitely should be around that, that range. Yeah. And um, don't overspend. Be consistent, be disciplined towards your budget. I feel like, you know, we can have a budget, but if you don't have the discipline behind it, you're not yeah. going to stick yeah. to it. So that's very important. Um, another thing, number three, will definitely be to minimize the credit card use. Uh-oh. Yeah, minimize it. Cash is king. <laughs> Cash, Cash is, is king. king. Everybody say, cash is king. <laughs> so I would definitely um, advise to minimize the credit card use because, you know, high interest rates, not everybody uses their credit card responsibly. These are loan shocking rates these days. 25, 26 it's, percent. It's what ridiculous. is that? Just how wow. compound interest can be used, well, can be um, worked towards you. It can also work against you in a way, in the form of a credit card. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean. Credit card debt is the third leading cause of bankruptcy in the U.S. So wow. it's, it's huge, and I feel like use your credit card responsibly or don't use it at all. Leave it at home. So what if you have a credit card that with high interest and it's up there? Yeah. All right, $8,000. All right, I've, say $4,000. How do you start getting rid of that? Well, I would definitely um, advise you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into that um, a little bit more. Oh, okay. Um, number four will definitely be to... Um, if you can't afford it, don't buy it, straight up. <laughs> I feel like you can get creative during the holidays. You don't necessarily have to spend so much money to give you know, to yeah. your loved ones. I definitely feel like there's a lot of do-it-yourself videos on YouTube that would um, definitely help you stick to your budget so and So wait a minute, spend. that thing that uh, some people say, if you want it, get it, <laughs> is out the window? It's out the window. <laughs> I feel like you need to think about your long-term goals, especially financially. I feel like if you become very uh, spontaneous or an impulsive buyer, that's going to become the way of life in many other aspects of your life. It's a bad habit? It's a bad habit. And um, it's a poor habit, to be honest. I it's it's something that people have to I have a friend eliminate. since we were working with the community centers and the, and the projects. He's been saving his money since we were kids. He'll go buy $500 worth of food in his supermarket, and he'll pay $80. Coupons. Yeah, coupons. coupons. There you go. That's Bingo. That's huge. That's huge. And 
It's and he smart. takes the time to go on the computer, yeah. any way he can get the store coupons. I've and seen He goes I've online. He does, he, he does his homework with that. Right. So that's being strategic, right? There is so many um, sales offers. There's so many coupons out there that people have no idea. Do you they, use them? I do. And I'm, I'm proud to say I there use them. Go. I'm a couponer. <laughs> I went to take a friend of mine out to, uh, to lunch because he helped me out with a you know, big project. I said, no, come on, I'll take you up. He said, no, let me take you. So we were driving around, and we stopped at Burger King. I said, oh, okay. We went in, and he, there were two for us. I think we paid $9. We got two Whoppers <laughs> and two sodas and French fries. I said, oh, my God. But he, we saved a lot of money. He paid nothing but $9. That's good. That's good. Although I wouldn't recommend you to eat fast food, but... <laughs> Um, I know. That's why he wanted to take me. I had a different idea. But save, you got to save. He was, he was working his coupons. <laughs> right. Um, last but not least, I definitely encourage everybody to educate yourself. Learn how money works. Learn the rule of money, yeah. the wealth formula, and that's everything and more that we teach in our workshops every oh, Thursday yeah. in um, 3030 Middletown <clears> Road <throat> in our <throat> office. We also have workshops. Well, I'm sorry, our Thursday workshops are from 7 to 9 p.m., and then our Saturdays are in Spanish at 11 a.m., the same place, 3030 Middletown Road, our Bronx Financial Center. And we also have um, an event going on this Sunday at Mercy College for those of you who oh, want to kickstart the new year yeah. and maybe um, pursue a career in the financial industry. That will be in Mercy College from 1 to 3 p.m. So for more information, my number is there, and I believe my email. You can definitely reach out to me and for more info. Lisa Rett, Compusano. Save, save, save. Save, save, save. <laughs> Start today. Save, Start save. Start today. Can you tell us to save and the holidays are here? And this is spending season. Because I f exactly. That's why Tis I'm Tis the season to, to be spending. <laughs> I la, feel la, like la, 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 la. everything is geared to tell you to spend. Yes, but yes. I'm that person. You You're going to go save. against, against the grain. Everything's out the window. Exactly. Hashtag yeah. you should be saving. <laughs> Hashtag you should be saving. Yes. It's, it's important. I mean, you also want to think about the... The, um, the cycle that you're passing on to your kids because they're also going to be looking yeah, at you and true. your spending habits is something they're, they're going to pick up on. Yeah. right So you want to make sure that you teach them how to save. And for those important um, moments in your life, whether it's an investment in a house or um, emergency fund, which is yeah. huge, yeah. you know, that's little things that people have to keep in mind when you're um, saving. It's like the holidays are important, but it's mm -hmm. temporary. I'm hanging out with her, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, told, I told my last guest that I was hanging out with her, but I'm hanging out with you, too. Thank you. A wealth of information. <laughs> Where do we go for more? Yes, um, you can definitely, like I said, my number is is up. Um, come, to, come visit me at the workshops. I host them along with some other um, oh, trainers great. at the office. Every Thursday, 7 to 9, we have different topics going mm -hmm. on and in Spanish on Saturdays. Say it in Spanish briefly. En español, por favor, vengan a nuestra oficina para aprender más a Contra Finanzas en, el, en la oficina del 3030 Middletown Road. And I got to say, 107.5WBLS. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you Give so a big much. round of applause, everybody. Lisa Rett, Capisano, financial educator and certified college consultant for the National Campaign for Financial Literacy. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you. Can you sing it? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Go ahead. <laughs> Open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells a little louder. Have to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Open next. <laughs> Welcome back. 
This is 340 again, and you at home, thank you for watching. This holiday season, well, it can often bring up feelings of loneliness and depression. Our next guest joins us with the tips on how to manage emotions, depression, and loneliness. We welcome Brett Scudder. He's the founder of the Scudder Intervention Services Foundation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bob. No stranger to the show. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, were you a vet? No, I wasn't. You would we, we, we spoke before, mm -hmm. right? And we, we do a lot of work. This. We yeah. do a lot of work with the vets. Yeah. yeah. So uh, tell us uh, about what you're into now. I see your button that says oh, um, a mind free of suicide. A mind free often from suicide. Yeah. I mean, it's the holiday season, and I'm glad that I heard um, you know the two previous people talk about the challenges, finance, finances, and all that stuff. But it's the holiday season. Yeah. The bottom line is a lot of anxiety. A lot of people are up in hype. Like I gotta get this. I gotta get that. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. Yeah. And it just pushes the anxiety level for a lot of people, right? And it's depressing if you can't afford it. It's depressing if you can't afford it, but it's also depressing for people who can't afford it. Because, yeah. again, it's spending sometimes when they don't want to spend. And so because of the holiday season, a lot of people feel pressured into getting gifts yeah, and A lot of spending. people don't like to get in, out in all that traffic and all yes, the, the yes. pushing and shoving and, yeah. and those and also, crowded stores. They also comparing gifts, right? So it's not simply just getting a gift anymore. People want ah, specific things. Yeah. Now you have people asking for gifts. They're not... Just saying, I want to give. They're telling you what they want. You can't just say to somebody, hey, I love you. You know, I wish we could get back to that, but it's something that we're trying to recondition <laughs> the mind for, yeah. But they, we definitely they won't accept that, right? It has to be something material. We have become a, a very materialistic. And a, and love, you know? a very materialistic and a very commercialized society. Yeah. And a lot of people are looking for that altruistic, innate love and, you know, that togetherness, and it's not there anymore. So you find a lot of people now with anxiety yeah. of the holidays and some of them just really don't want to get involved in a lot of things but it's family you got to go by the family so, you but what happens when it comes to mental health during the holidays what it's an it's a heightened increase anxiety is a part of mental health right so you look at anxiety and how people get anxious for the holidays yeah. that increases everything across the board stress levels depression levels mm -hmm. just people moving around running through so much just to get so little done and then at the end of the day, they're just stressed out so how do we avoid this? It's not that we can avoid it. What we need to do is really control ourselves, right? Let's be honest. If I can't afford a gift to give you a gift, just say that I can't afford it this year. Not try to put myself in a position where I have to now max out my credit cards, empty the bank, know that come January I'm going to have to figure out how am I going to pay January, this credit card that's bill. That's all the real stress yes, comes in on how yes. you're going to pay all this stuff back. And a lot of times <laughs> we don't think about all of that now. But when January, February comes, we feel the pain of that. That's why Lisa Rett said, you know, budget yourself and just <laughs> maybe don't spend any of that. Keep it, you know. Exactly. This is all I'm going to spend and that's it. Right. But it's hard for a person to walk into a store, say I'm so here to spend $100 and then see all these sales, right? And then you all of a sudden. The, you link up with the person in your mind and you <laughs> link up, put it together with a gift. It's like, ah. Yeah. Ah, stop pulling your hair out. So depression and suicide rates are very high during this yeah. time of the holidays. And, and we just want people to know that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to be depressed. Yeah. It's okay to feel anxious. It's okay to feel stressed out. But how do you manage that, right? How do you manage it? Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to go out, if you don't want to be around family, if you don't want to be around friends, don't feel pressured into it. Just simply say, hey, I'm not feeling up to it today. I just feel like I want to just do something different. Be different. Yeah. Do something different. Get away from the norms and the whole societal construct of what the holiday is. Yeah. You know, move away from that. How long do you have to be depressed to call it depression? Well, it's not only a length of time thing. It's also the feeling, right? So, you know, we usually talk about being sad, right? Oh, you're so sad. Why are you so sad? Over a period of time, that sadness is not sadness anymore. It's now depression. But depression is not just depression. You have chronic depression. You have different levels of depression. Yeah. So after, say, two period, two weeks, you're not depressed anymore. It, it's a little bit more than that. And start looking into that, right? Yeah. And not waiting for it to get you to that state where it's disabling, because depression can be very disabling. You have people who can't come out of their house, can't come out of their bed, can't go to work, can't function because they're in that state. That's deep depression. Yeah. That is chronic deep. depression and deep yeah. depression, yes. So your organization does what? So what we provide services for people. Unlike most organizations where you have to come out for services, we bring the services to people. Because we know the holidays are tight times, right? You look at the weather and the weather changes, snowstorms, nor'easters, 
all these different things that are happening, people don't want to come out. And right. so we bring the services to them. So we go to Make schools. House calls. We, we are wherever that person is. We bring the services to them so that we can help them to manage the emotions, whatever they are going through. You have a lot of lonely people during the holidays. Yeah. And you see them and you'll never know because we wear these masks to cover up, you know, the pain that we're going through. And so you just never know how people are feeling. Did you ever suffer from depression? I suffered from depression. I struggled with my own suicidality. I'm a suicide attempt survivor. This is the reason why I do the work that I do because yeah. I know what the experience is like and I know how disabling it can be. But when you look at me, you would never tell that I'm a person who has to fight to get up in the morning and yeah. struggle with all of that, right? So how did you overcome that? And what are some of the things that you were feeling when you were going through it? It's a disabling experience, right? I, you know, working, I, I'm a high functioning depressed person. And I say that because a lot of times people think about depression. We think of people who can't function, they're disabled, can't get out of bed. Yeah. But there are many of people like myself who are very good at what we do, yeah, excelling like this, what we functioning do. Functioning alcoholics and yeah. there you go. I understand. Yeah. So yeah. everyone's experience is different. And this is why normalizing the conversation is important for us to just say it's okay to be depressed. And it's okay to say I feel depressed. I feel down. I'm not feeling myself today. It's okay to feel that way. Yeah. And not feel pressured by society to get up, to get out, to do all these different things. Yeah, but how do you climb out of that? Do you call for help? How did, how did you climb out? Help is different for everyone, right? So you could either seek professional help or you seek help from family members or intimate partners, right? Just so talk to somebody. Just come out and be open and honest about how you're feeling. Oh, open, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're open. open. Now, yeah, yeah, we're unopen. Yeah, but we got to be open and honest about how we're feeling. Many yeah. of us are lying to ourselves because we're afraid, we're ashamed of how we're feeling or what mm -hmm. we're, we're going through. And so to keep all those emotions bottled up inside is not helpful because then it actually starts creating physical health conditions yeah, too. and then a lot of people don't want to go out and seek help because they're going to say, oh, I don't want anybody to know that I need help. There's that stigma. I, I don't want to be that person. I don't want anybody to point a finger or, or shine a light on me. But there's another side to that, Bob. The other side to that is when you go to seek the help, sometimes the help makes you feel worse than not really? seeking help. Yeah. And so we have to look at that from the perspective of who is providing the services to people who are in that state. So you have to go to the right person. How do you get this help? I'm you have to find the right resource that works for you. It the organization it, has that. We have all the resources, but we're not the only ones. There are many organizations out here who provide the services. Yeah. We're just one of many. And I'm fortunate to be in the position I that I'm I want to know in. that I'm... If I'm suffering, I want to know who to go to. Well, you can call us, you know. We can call you can call us, we can connect you with resources. We we do something very different yeah. in terms of we don't give you a piece of paper and say here are 10 numbers or 10 different people to call. Yeah. We're going to say, "Hey, you know, we have Bob. Bob is in need of help. You offer this, you offer that, you offer those services that we think will help Bob." We sit with Bob and say, "Hey Bob, we found some services that will be very helpful for you." So we're taking away as much of the stress and anxiety mm -hmm. from you seeking services because you're already going through so much. Yeah. The last thing you need is to add on to by calling, be rejected, turned down. We don't accept your insurance. So you grab Do you the have person insurance? by the hand and just we walk it. with them. We share the experience with them. Mm -hmm. We share the journey with them. Yeah, and uh, people can. Uh, Call your organization or go we have to your a 24/7 24-7 crisis lifeline. The number is 917-651-1889. We do talk and text. Say it again. 917-651-1889. And we do talk and text. Mm -hmm. We will come to you wherever you are, and we will be able to open up doors for you to help you to get the help that you need. There you go. So if you need that help, do you have a website? Our website is sisfi.org. And S -I -S it has S-I-S-F-I dot org, shortened for the Scudder Intervention Services Foundation. I see it, S-I-S-F-I dot org. And Thank the good you. thing, Bob, is that well, all of us who really work with the organization have lived the experience. We're not ashamed of it. I'm very public about my suicidality yeah. and my suicide attempt, and that's how many people come to me because they're like, if you can speak out, we can, we can get the help that we need. We can work together. We're not mandated reporters, so don't fear coming to us and we're going to yeah. talk about or tell you, you know, whatever your experience is to law well, enforcement. I'm glad you didn't commit suicide. and You're here to share some of that wonderful information to people who are, who are suffering, who thank need you. help. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We Give all another big round of applause, everybody. All right. Brett A. Scudder, President, Chairman, Founder, SISFI.org. .org. .org. All right. 
Thank we'll you. take a quick break right here, but uh, stay right there. We'll be right, uh, we'll be right back with more open next. I see you guys. <laughs> Welcome back. Our next guest is uh, holding a series of free bilingual bike classes in New York City. I believe we spoke before, right? I'm not sure, yeah. but it's nice I to spoke meet you. Yeah, great. She's here to tell us more. She's the founder of the Brown Bike Girl. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Courtney Williams, to the show. Yes. How are you? I'm fantastic. Good. Thanks for having me. So tell us about this uh, free bike skills class. Right. So I am a bicycle advocacy consultant. So that means instead of just being a bike advocate like Go Bikes, I help organizations that want to get communities of color cycling and say, this is how we're going to do it. Yeah. So that organization right now would be the New York City Department of Transportation. They're doing a big campaign for rider encouragement. And they asked me to be the person who teach bike skills to different people. That's how you do it. Yeah, right. they, they believe in me, and I'm there happy about that. There you go. It's always wonderful to have somebody believe in you, right? Yeah, yeah. you so, got a big organization behind you. Right. Yeah. So I'm very happy to do this. So the bike skills classes are there to encourage people to ride bikes. My, my ultimate mission is to help communities of color find the value in biking. Yeah. Um, and that's what the classes are. So there's a suite of three classes. One is called Cycling Makes Sense. So in line with the other uh -huh. guests, how cycling is going to save you money and make it worthwhile for you. Power but, cycling? Not, not power cycling, just regular cycling, commuting, um, making your errands, doing I your grocery shopping. I see people power cycling through the streets, though. I mean, bike lanes. if you're about that like life. like they're doing 30, 35 miles an and hour. And if you can sustain that. They're not that. pedaling. What? What, what's that? Oh, well, sometimes there's power uh, assist, pedal assist, but yeah. those bikes only go 20 miles an hour. Maybe you're talking about delivery Somebody bikes. did something. They enhanced it. Well, you know, that's part of bike. bike culture is souping <laughs> up your bike if you're really about that. But we're talking about the regular everyday person who wants to move a yeah. little bit faster, who doesn't want to be congested in, you know, the subways pressed up against everybody yeah. and have that kind of freedom. So, right, class is about saving money through cycling. This class is about understanding how you can be safe and control your space. So I made a class called Urban Road School that makes you sure of ex everything that you want to do. Yeah. And the last one, which is very practical now, because people are like, why are there bike classes in December? Well, bikes go on sale in December, so it's a great oh, time. Oh, it's a great time. It's and a great time to buy one. So like cold weather discount. cycling. Yeah. Right. Because they tell in them the summertime, like, the prices go up. Right. The bikes are just like cars. So, you know, everybody's going to be on what, 2019s and 2020 cars? Yeah. Well, if it's a 2018, 17, 16 bike, those bikes are cheaper. And it's winter, so yeah. they're going to be even more discounted. What bikes do you recommend for people who? Oh, it's out? all super uh, personal. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I have I have a collection of five bikes, and you they do? all serve different purposes. So, like, I have long a long distance. My long distance bike is a live giant bike, but it's it's very specific for Tell geometry. It's yeah. well, it's not about the seat; it's actually about the fit. Like, I have a very short torso, uh -huh. so I need a bike with short geometry. So it's all scientific, but it is stuff that you can learn at the classes that I do yeah. teach. Yeah. 
and every, everything is ergonomically correct? You have everything yes, that you need? Yes, it's super okay. important for a cyclist, a new cyclist, anybody who's going to buy a used bike, which are the most affordable bikes, to make sure that those bikes fit them. So you'll see cyclists sometimes when uh -huh. they're in the street and their knees are turned out and they're kind of <laughs> like doing this wobble clown thing. Like yeah. that's not a good fit. Like a, a cyclist's leg shouldn't go all the way straight. And it shouldn't be bent out all the way either. Right, right, right. Um, you shouldn't be reaching too far out because that's stressing out your back. So going to a good so bike shop. So when you're pedaling, it doesn't go to the extent of your... You should your not go straight because it's a circle, right? Yeah. To come back around, you need a, just a little bit of bend. A little bit of bend. To just keep yeah. going. So this one pushes, this that one pushes. Tip to no tiptoeing, all that. It's very hard to control a bike that way. And that's one of the ways that I think a lot of cyclists aren't as safe as they could be. Yeah. Is they don't take the very small precautions to, you know, get a bike that fits, um, use lights, especially in the dark. Yeah. Um, but some people are like, oh, if I don't use lights or I wear all black, the cars won't see me and I can control the cars. And it's really about being predictable and visible yes. to everybody. At all you times. know, bikes yeah. are usually regarded as like kids toys and that's why people don't think oh there's rules I don't need to follow the traffic lights but like you're a vehicle to New York yeah. and that's why bicyclists yeah. sometimes get tickets so that's what that campaign that Department of Transportation is doing called Get There and the interaction between pedestrians and bicyclists because People step out into the street We're into all a bike road lane. Users and we need to respect each other. This is yeah. New York City. There is no point where there's not somebody next to you, behind you, or about to be in That's front right. of you. That's right. So a cyclist should be um, courteous, but also everybody else needs to be courteous as well. It's an ecosystem. And if you're a male and the bike is too tall for you, if you jump off of the seat and well, the pole is right there, everybody's the got bike sensitive is too parts. tall for you. If you're a lady, that can happen too. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's sensitive. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely something that can happen. Yeah. But I'm super happy to do these classes because um, mm -hmm. I'm going the extra mile. Um, the classes are happening concentrated right now around the 14th Street area. As you know, oh. the L train will be shutting down in right, April right. for about 18 months. Um, so on mm -hmm. the Williamsburg side and the Lower East side is where the classes are concentrated at oh, community right organizations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we're going to community organizations where I feel that communities of color already feel a part of that organization, so it's yeah. more welcoming. And the other thing is that all the classes are being uh, translated in Spanish. Because if we want everybody to learn and everybody to be safe, there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing at least language accessibility, right? Yeah. So MTA, you go into the subway, all the, all the uh, signs are translated into multiple languages, so I felt like this is the least we could do. Yeah. You gotta wear your helmet, too. Absolutely. Wear that helmet. Helmets are necessary. Like, most of the accidents that people have are within like three quarters of a mile to their house because they're so comfortable and they're like, nothing can happen. Something can always happen. And if the most critical injuries happen when people are not wearing helmets. That's right, when yeah. you least suspect it. Um, so give us information on where we can go. So if you want to stay in touch and updated about bike classes, but also in the spring, these will transform into rides. Mm -hmm. You can follow me at the Brown Bike Girl on Instagram, and I have a Facebook page as well. Um, everything. If you just type the Brown Bike Girl New York City bikes, you'll find your way to me. Courtney Williams, 340. Give her a big round of applause. Courtney Williams, the founder. Brown. The bike girl, the brown bike girl. That's Thank right. you so much for coming by. No problem. Thanks for having and me. You are a wealth of information. <laughs> and you, you can so ask much. anything else. All right. I have two bikes. I have a, a 15 speed, but I don't use them anymore. Then uh -oh. I have like a sort of a, a mountain kind of bike, but I don't know. I try the out the bike share bikes as well. Try it? Yeah, try them okay. out. I'll try it out. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We'll take a quick break right here, but then we'll be right back. My man Bobby C has a sports roundup and a whole lot more next on Open. The only time Kyler Murray did not throw for 200 yards in a game was earlier this season in September against Army. The rest of the year, you could make a case for him being the best quarterback on the best offense in the country. And tonight, he's your 2018 Heisman winner.
Murray, the two-sport star who also plays baseball, was drafted by the Oakland Athletics this past June, has been named the country's top college football player in what could be his final season playing the sport. This means back-to-back -back Heisman winners for Oklahoma after last year with Baker Mayfield. Murray, who threw for over 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns for Oklahoma this season, won the Heisman on Saturday night in Times Square, beating out fellow quarterbacks Tua Tagovailoa of Alabama and Dwayne Haskins of Ohio State. This is something I've dreamed of my whole life. Uh, you know, I felt like a lot of hard work uh, has been put into this, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm not here if it's not for um, God, my teammates, my coaches, my family. So um, it, it hasn't sunk in yet, but uh, this is, this is uh, crazy. Oklahoma coach Lincoln Riley has gotten used to coming to New York this time of year. This is certainly a team award and is very appropriate as he named his offensive lineman, went through the other uh, other players, all the other staff members, everybody that was involved to help it come to this. That's that's who it's about tonight. Back to back quarterbacks, I don't think that's ever happened. Uh, so no doubt, but it's uh, tonight's tonight's about Kyler. The season has been special uh, with my teammates. Uh, it's. It's been everything I dreamed of, uh, and to, to you know represent them up here is, uh, is special. It wasn't as close as I thought it would be, and Tua didn't win, but I was right about the voters being swayed a bit by Tua going down with an injury and being out late in the conference championship game. That allowed a close race to go to Murray, who I believe will indeed go the baseball route and play for the A's. I would still love to see the newest Heisman winner give both sports a shot, although it would be extra difficult to play quarterback and juggle baseball, of course. Former Alabama All-American and current Dallas Cowboy wide receiver Amari Cooper put on a jaw-dropping display of athleticism and route to his best game as a pro during Saturday's win over the Philadelphia Eagles. The Cowboys wideout recorded 10 receptions for a career-high 217 receiving yards and three touchdowns, leading his team to their fifth victory in six tries since his arrival from the Oakland Raiders earlier this season. Dallas's win eliminates the New York football Giants from the division race, although they are still narrowly alive in the wild card standings. I said it all season the Giants were better than their dismal record, but of course their late season surge might not be enough, especially with Dallas on a similar streak. The G-Men are now 5-8 and eight following Sunday's impressive of 40 16 win over the Washington Redskins. The Giants won for the fourth time in five games and rookie star Saquon Barkley had 197 total yards and a touchdown. He rushed for a career high 170 yards on 14 carries, including a 78 yard run in the second quarter. It was Barkley's fourth touchdown run of 50 or more yards. The Giants had three such runs over the previous 10 seasons. That's how special this rookie has been nothing was more special than the Miami Miracle Sunday with their playoff hopes hanging on by a slim thread. The Dolphins called a last ditch hook and lateral play named Boise. Two pitches, a cross field zigzag and Kenyon Drake outrunning a stumbling Rob Gronkowski for a touchdown as time expired, gave Miami a 34 33 victory over the New England Patriots. The play was so stunning that the Pats radio broadcast went silent, dead air as the broadcasters struggled to compute what they had just saw. Amazing finish in Miami. It wasn't as dramatic in Buffalo, but Sam Darnold did rally the Jets late. For 11 seconds Sunday, Gang Green was as good as anybody. Darnold had the ball and everything went right for a team that has experienced so much wrong this season. On one magical play, the rookie signal caller outran the Bills. A 46.8 yard scramble, a highlight film block created a small window in the end zone on the run. Darnold fired a seven yard touchdown pass to Robbie Anderson, the signature play in the Jets 27 23 win over the Bills. It was the most yards run by a quarterback on a completion in the last two seasons, but it was so much more than that for the four and nine Jets who snapped a six game losing streak. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. We'll stay with the NFL. Another week, another record for Patriots quarterback Tom Brady. With a second quarter touchdown pass to Julian Edelman on Sunday afternoon against the Dolphins, Brady is now the all-time leader in touchdown passes, regular season and postseason combined, surpassing Peyton Manning on the NFL's all-time list. Only thing that spoiled the record, of course, was the Miami Miracle itself. Aaron Rodgers entered the record book Sunday, too. The Packers quarterback nearly came up six 
throws short of the NFL record for the most consecutive pass attempts without an interception. But after Atlanta Falcons linebacker Deion Jones dropped a ball that practically hit him between the numbers on his jersey, Rodgers successfully threw on on his third pass attempt of the second half. He, he tied Brady's NFL record with his 358 straight pass without an interception. On his next throw, he broke it. Rodgers' 359th consecutive pass without an interception was a 24-yard touchdown to Randall Cobb to give the Packers a 27-7 third quarter lead over the Falcons and route to a 34-20 victory. After Sunday night's destruction of the L.A. Rams offense, one thing is clear, the Chicago Bears and their defense are for real. They are legitimate legitimate contenders to win the NFC. They top the Rams 15-6. The Hall of Fame will have to wait for the late great George Steinbrenner, but the doors will be open this summer for Harold Baines and Lee Smith. Baines was somewhat surprisingly picked for the Baseball Hall of Fame on Sunday after nearly never coming close in any previous election. While Lee Smith is third on the all-time save saves list. Baines Hall not is a head scratcher considering that he never finished higher than ninth in MVP voting. Smith, who held the major league record for saves when he retired, was an easy pick when the today's game era committee met at the winter meetings. It took 12 votes for election by the 16 member panel. Smith was unanimous. Baines got 12 and former outfielder and manager Lou Pinella fell just short with 11. Steinbrenner, Oral Hershiser, Albert Bell, Joe Carter, Will Clark, Davey Johnson, and Charlie Manuel all, all received fewer than five votes. Smith and Baines both debuted in Chicago during the 1980 season. Smith began with the Cubs and went on to record 478 saves, while Baines started out with the White Sox and had 2,866 career hits. My two cents, Smith should have been put in a long time ago, and Baines was a feared hitter who appears to have succeeded in baseball without PEDs. His numbers would be received much better if it wasn't for these steroid cheats. The baseball winter meetings are upon us. Still no deals for Bryce Harper and Manny Machado. We'll see if the Yanks and Mets are players in the sweepstakes in Las Vegas. 77 games, that's how many matches it took for Atlanta United to reach the summit of Major League Soccer. In just two years, the young franchise took home the most prized domestic competition on Saturday night. Atlanta won MLS Cup 2018 with a convincing performance, especially defensively, topping Portland 2-0. Congrats to them. In the UFC, Brian Ortega broke his silence after a gritty battle against UFC featherweight champion Max Holloway in the UFC 231 event Saturday night in Toronto. Ortega, who agreed with the doctor's stoppage, says he broke his thumb and his nose against Holloway in a statement released Sunday night. Yikes. On the NHL ice, the Rangers will skate in Tampa Bay tonight. Puck drops at 7.30. The Islanders are home to face Pittsburgh. That game gets underway at 7. And the Devils are in San Jose tonight following their 6-5 shootout loss to Anaheim last night. In the NBA, the 10-18 Nets are back in action Wednesday night. They will be in Philadelphia to face the Sixers. The Knicks fell 119-107 to Charlotte last night at the Garden. Bronx native Kimball Walker had 25 points. We caught up with him in the postgame. Can you talk about how much you like playing here at Madison Square Garden from college and from the pros? I mean, I'm home. This is where I'm from. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure anybody who goes home and play where they're from, it's, it's exciting to them. Um, so, for me, yeah, I mean, you know, I get a chance to you know, play in front of my family and friends, you know, play in front of the people that know me best. Can you talk a little bit about how you guys pretty much jumped on them right from the start? Yeah, um, you know, we knew they played last night. Um, you know, we, we just wanted to come out and execute that game plan. We wanted to play how we played, and that's what we did. We came out really aggressive on both ends of, the, on both ends of, of the floor, and it worked out for us. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for some additional thoughts on Kimball Walker and his upcoming free agency. Any followers of our show know that we've had you covered on Kimba since he was a teenager, long before he was an NBA All-Star, let alone drafted by the association. We were there when Kimba ruled the Big East Tournament, five games in five days, unforgettable. Kimba seems to save his best for the world's most famous arena. On Sunday night, Walker didn't shut the door completely on returning to New York, leaving it open just enough to give Knicks fans a glimmer of hope. Open quote, I don't have any interest in coming back home right now.
close quote, the Hornets free, free agent to be point guard said when asked if playing for his hometown Knicks would appeal to him. The 28 year old dazzled last night doing more than just the 25 points he had four threes, six rebounds, six assists, four steals, and just two turnovers to boot, leading Knicks head coach David Fisdale to say Walker is one of the top five players at his position in the league. Last year on the show, I begged the Knicks to swing a trade for Kimba, who just seems to be getting better and better. Last night, I realized that that would be selfish of me. Any fan of Walker, as much as they would love to see him come home, should want what's best for him. The Knicks aren't ready to win. Perhaps they could be with Walker and, say, Kevin Durant. But if it's just Kimba, the expectation of the Bronx boy coming home to play savior might be too much for anyone, including the great Kimba Walker. Walker is Charlotte's all-time leading scorer and has built a nice thing down there. I don't think it would be bad for him to stay in Charlotte after all. Hopefully the organization can build around him. If not, I would love to see Kimba go to a larger market where he could compete for a title. There's still a selfish part of me that wants it to be New York. But again, a true fan of Walker should want what's best for him. He's a great player and an even greater person. He's a Bronx legend and he always will be no matter what NBA team he plays for. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. And welcome back. PS 340s in the house. Thank you guys so much. Next guest is the founder of Life Compass Health and Wellness, LLC, and joins us for a look at ways to uh, keep healthy this holiday season. We welcome Myrna Tamal to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, thank you. So for are you all Good about morning. health and wellness, healthy eating, healthy living? Yes. There's a lot of people that are into it. They want to stay out of the hospital, stay out of the doctor's office. And you have the answers. You have tips. Well, I have lots of tips. So um, I'm a holistic nutritionist, mm -hmm. and I'm also a research scientist. So I have a blend of best of the both worlds All right. of, you know, conventional medicine and um, holistic Eastern medicine. Yes. So in terms of um, my passion, prevention is key in, you know, staying healthy, being active. Get to the root of all evil. Yes. Get to the root of it. Well, that's one of the things. You, yeah. We need to understand the root causes of certain diseases and ailments and how you feel is important. And what you eat, yeah. you are what you eat. You, We all know that saying. And especially around the holiday times, we tend to overindulge. We want to have the chocolate cake and, you know, the candy canes and the gumdrops and all those things. Yeah. And people tend to go overboard. So one thing, uh, a few tips I would recommend is to stay on track. You know, follow your normal routines, you know, take your vitamins, you know, drink plenty of water, get plenty of rest. And yeah. when you're eating, when you go to the holiday parties and things, don't feel guilty about, you know, you could have a drink, but in yeah. moderation. And you mentioned something early off mic about the type 2 diabetes. A lot of people in our community are, are dealing with that. And they weren't born with it. That's why it's called type 2. They yes. acquired it. Uh, through diet or whatever. So, yeah, so actually it's funny you mentioned that because actually um, that's one of the reasons why I got into um, nutrition because personally I had to deal with my mother's um, complications. She had type 2 diabetes. She had yeah. severe complications. And a lot of it is a tribute to diet, lifestyle, you stress. You changed the diet? Um, that's what got me into it. Unfortunately, she passed, so, you oh, know, or, sorry, you know but... 
that is kind of like what drove me more so from, away from the science and more to a natural so I path. I need to help people. Yes. I need to help prevent this. Yeah, so diet is key in preventing. What you eat is important for your, your health. So things that are high on a glycemic, glycemic scale, I mention this all the time on radio too, mm. things that are high on a glycemic scale will throw you into type 2 diabetes. So you think of your pancreas right here, mm. and you think of it as a, a sponge. Yeah. And when you eat things that are high on the glycemic scale, you're like draining that sponge well, of its insulin. Well, the thing with diabetes is a bit more complex. Yes, it's a pan pancreas, but the thing with diabetes is it's your body, over time, you eat sugar. I was just trying to give a personal a illustration. Not a personal yeah, illustration. Yeah, no. Uh, no but, she said, look, it's like this. So if but you yeah. eat, like, processed sugar, over yeah. time, your body becomes stressed. And you, what you, over time, what you develop is insulin resistance, and your body doesn't know what to do with that excess um, sugar. So you tend to gain weight, you get fat, and your pancreas... Uh, you know, is stress. So the, over time, type two diabetes develops. Yeah. So it's not like you eat something, you get diabetes. It's a long process that develops yeah. through bad habits and in inappropriate foods and stress and sleep is important. Yeah, and that's that's one of the ways that people get uh, type two about diabetes. But the other way is you're like draining yourself. You you have enough insulin. You may have enough insulin, but through that intake, the food intake, you're draining it. You're using it up. Well, right? it's not. It, you might have enough insulin, but you know, insulin is if not to get too scientific. It has receptors and it binds. So yeah. if on your cells. So if you is a mis um, misregulation basically in that your body has enough, but is not using it properly. Right. right. So you tend to have lots of sugar in your blood, right. and the insulin is not working. But if you fixed it through diet. You yes. can you can help correct that and reduce the insulin intake if you're taking some outside stimulant. Yes, you can, insulin. or you could actually do it with food. If you eat yeah. low glycemic foods, like low, glycemic is basically just an indicator of how your body utilizes carbohydrates in yeah. terms of you know process. So you could actually correct a lot of this with food. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. yes. All right. Yeah. So you could. So where, where can we go for more information on what you're doing? Because you seem to have a, a wealth, a lot of information that the, we can't. Um, to get to right well, now. you could go to my website, it's lifecompasswellness.com, um, mm -hmm. yes. or you could go follow me on Instagram, I'm lifecompass3, and, or you could um, call me, it's 909-554-3326. Right, look what this guy's doing right there. Yeah, keep doing that. <laughs> look at him, look at him. You can turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a big round of applause, everybody. Myrna Timol. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for stopping by. You got to come by again. Okay. okay. We got to get. We got to get into it. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's show. I'd like to thank uh, our guests and uh, you for joining us, for tuning in and checking it out. PS340. Thank you guys for coming down. Give yourselves another big round of applause. Now you can catch the new cable cast of uh, of Open at uh, well tonight at five and ten p.m. Where you can watch anytime on the web at BronxNet.org or you can tune in Wednesday for all new episode with Darren Jaime, our host. For Wednesday, all right? For all of us here at Bronx, that have a great and enjoyable day. And always remember this, what you are is God's gift to you. What you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice and let the choice control the chooser. Of the Dr. Bob Lee, I'll catch you over 107.5 WBLS tonight, right after the quiet storm. I love you all. Have a great day. Peace. Thank you.